Good evening. Thanks for joining us tonight. Um, I hope you guys remember it and we'll stick around. We're honoring our graduates tonight. Um, I think our lesson is going to be geared towards them and then there will be a reception downstairs so with some finger foods and that kind of thing. So make sure you stick around for the fellowship with that. Um, just a quick reminder that the men's breakfast is next Saturday. Um, 7 a.m. breakfast, um, 8 o'clock we'll start discussing uh, the first chapter of our study book. Um, remember the send-off for Tyler and Chelsea on Friday the 20th at 5.30. Um, and then the big one next Sunday is our Neighbors Day. So make sure you're inviting your neighbors. We'll have our morning services um, followed by a potluck. Uh, 12.30 Devo after that, and then we can head out to the lake for an evening, afternoon of fellowship out there. A um, couple updates from this morning. Um, we got a message from the Bovings that um, Jared did make, or uh, not Jared, Will, um, did make it up to St. Louis. They treated some blisters, uh, so he got some treatment today. He's back home or on his way home, and he'll follow up with the burn unit um, either later this week or sometime. Um, Yes. Yes. Yeah. Jet did not, it wasn't involved in it, it just will, is my understanding. So, um, any other updates? Okay. I'll turn it over to Billy. You pray with me. Our most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time you've given us to come here this evening to gather with our brothers and sisters to worship you, sing songs of praise to you, Father, and give you the glory that you so deserve. We ask you, Father, to be with those of our number that are sick, those that are undergoing treatments, especially Carl, and Ron, and Pauletta. We ask you to be with them as they go through their treatments, help them with their pain, and I pray, Father, they'll look to you for their comfort. We ask you, Father, to be with those that are graduating, Father, that we're honoring tonight. We pray that as they go out and re live the rest of their lives, Father, that they'll always look to you and follow your word. And as we go into this service, Father, we pray that everything will be acceptable in your sight. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Sing a little bit before Adam has our lesson this afternoon. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. As we think about our uh, graduates this afternoon and a couple of the songs that we'll sing following or before Adam's lesson, Be Thou My Vision. And I think that not only we take this not only for our graduates but also for ourselves as well. And then we'll sing, Lord, take control, and then we'll turn it over to Adam this afternoon. Be thou my vision, O Lord, of my heart, not be all else to be saved that thou art. Thy presence, my. 
doing good to have you all back uh, Matthew 6 if you want to go ahead and turn to it a little technical jargon for for Elijah up there if you can zoom me out to number two that would be good thank you tonight we honor our 2022 high school graduates this year we have four as you will see on our screen we have uh, starting from right to left we have Addison Asher, we have Riley Hedrick, we have Hannah Wright, and finally we have Cy Worley. Now, I don't know Addison very well, but I know that she is a, a very sweet and kind person. Reminds me a, a lot of your mom, and uh, we're thankful for, for you and for you coming, and um, uh, we are, just pray a blessing over you and your future uh, going forward. Um, Riley's over here. I'm thankful for Riley. He has become such a steady and mature presence. Um, I can remember when him and Reese would used to like run around the church building during the summers and wreak havoc on me and the, the youth intern. Um, I'm glad you've grown up since then. <laughs> and I'm thankful for the kind and the hardworking spirit that you have. I'm thankful for Hannah. Hannah does so much for the church. She has taught Bible classes. Uh, she has entertained my girls for hours on end. Uh, and she has really been a part of so many of the ministries of the church. And we are thankful for Hannah. I still remember when we had that fourth through sixth grade Bible class on Wednesday nights with you and Elijah and, and Alexander. It was such a great class. And it's so neat to see you grow from that point onward in your faith. I'm thankful for Cy. Now, Cy was not able to be with us uh, tonight. He is our future PGA golfer. Uh, he has made state uh, when it comes to golf, and so he is in Sedalia, Missouri, competing for state in golf. Uh, but I'm thankful for him, for sure, uh, and uh, seeing him grow up from VBS and onward, and I remember when him and Phoebe would come up and help their granddad at uh, the food pantry and and I'm just uh, thankful for how he's grown through the years. And I know that uh, my good friend Jack would be very proud of his grandson, Cy. I just want to stop here as we think about these four graduates and pray a blessing over their lives, their decisions, and their futures. Dear God, our Father, we are thankful for these young people. We're thankful, Lord, that they have come to faith in you and, and that they uh, are people who, who have grown uh, in their faith through the years. And we pray that you will bless them as they make some critical decisions in their lives going forward. Uh, th this time period is such a, a transformative time, and we pray, Lord, that they will grow to be more like Jesus in all their actions as they move forward. Help them, Lord, in the decisions they make as they uh, try to figure out what they're going to do for a living, who they're going to marry, who they... Uh, where they're going to live, and uh, through it all, we pray that they will trust in you. We ask a blessing on them and their lives and their families. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Personally, I love thinking about graduation. Graduation is a fun time of the year because you have these young people that are just so excited for their future. Well, maybe they're more excited that they're getting out of school. They're so excited about what's coming next to put that high school life behind them and to venture out in order to prepare for their future. 
And over the next few years, that will be their focus, whether they go to a trade school or whether they join the military, go to college, or just go on and start working and starting their career. They're always going to have an eye to the future, asking the question, what will I make of my life? What will I make of my future? And what can I do to support my family and shape my, shape my life to the way I want it to be? It's a very critical stage in life because so many habits and so many decisions will shape the rest of their life for better or for worse. And for us who, who are in the church, we should be concerned about these young people, concerned about their future, because in, in essence, their decisions will shape our future as the church. It will shape who the next elders and deacons and preachers and their wives will be. It will shape our missionaries and Bible class teachers and the pillars of the church. And so for all of us this evening, not just the graduates, but all of us, I want us to invest in our future. Because what you invest in will determine your future. Now for our graduates, a big part of this investment in the future involves money. Making money, making a career so that you can spend and save and give to other people. And you might start a, a career and, um, and a, a big part of that decision of, of beginning that career might be the money. How much you're going to make, how much are you going to be able to, to bring home to support your family and do some of the things that you love to do. Now, that should not be the only factor in choosing your career, but it is an important thing to think about. Investing a lot of time, investing a lot of money and effort into getting a, a degree in underwater basket weaving probably isn't the best of ideas in order to support your family. You have to think, what is a good investment now so that I can get returns for that investment in the future? And that's what Jesus is getting at in Matthew chapter 6, starting in verse 19, where he says this, Do not lay up for yourselves treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But lay up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither moth nor rust destroys, where thieves do not break in and steal. If you invest in the things that are temporary one day, those things are going to disappoint you. They're either going to rust, they're either going to be moth-eaten, they are going to corrode away. And if you want to get real morbid, eventually you're going to die, you're going to leave that to someone else. These temporary things are just that. They're temporary. One day they will disappoint us. And for all of us, we have to make sure that we're not putting our hope in things that are temporary. Instead, Jesus says, put your investment in eternity, in eternal things. Lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. They won't corrode there. They won't deteriorate. They won't be stolen. They will last forever. And then Jesus says this classic line there in verse 21. It says, for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. In this context, it's really emphasizing. It's really emphasizing these material things that we have, our possessions. How you spend your money, as Jesus is saying, will reveal where your heart is, what your passion is, what you love in life. A good test for all of us to see where our heart is is to take our bank statement, and just look through all of our purchases. Or to take your credit card statement and look at all the things that you bought and ask the question, what, where is my heart? Is my heart with buying more clothes? Is my heart with entertaining myself? Is my heart with getting the, the, the best next tool? Is my heart with buying this gigantic truck so everyone will think that I'm macho? Where is your heart? Just kidding. I'm not saying that you can't spend money on yourself. We'll see that in the next verse we read. Yet out of all that you spend, see how much money you're spending on yourself versus how much you're spending on others. 
Look at, at what you spend on your own enjoyment and, and what you're spending on giving to other people. How much of what you're spending is, is for you and you alone and how much is for you to share, to share enjoyment with other people. In 1 Timothy chapter 6, Paul speaks about this. Those who are wealthy in this age, he says, chapter 6 and verse 17, As for the rich in this present age, charge them not to be haughty, nor to set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God, who richly provides us with everything to enjoy. Yes, we can enjoy the fruits of our labor, even if it means buying a gigantic truck to seem a little macho. Yes, you can enjoy your riches. But then it says, verse 18, They are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share, thus storing up treasure for themselves as a foundation for the future, so that they may take hold of that which is truly life. Yes, enjoy the fruit of your labor, but at the same time, Paul says, do good. Be rich, filthy rich in good works. Be generous, be ready to share. And if you do that, you'll invest in eternity, not just in temporary things, but you will lay up treasures for yourself in heaven. And at the end of the day, the person with the most stuff, when they die, does not win. You're only chasing a life that will one day be gone. That which is truly life, as, as Paul is speaking about here, is beyond this life. It's a life that is spent with the Lord forever. So spend your money now with an eye to the future, not just our future lives, but our future in eternity with God. And what is true of money is true of other things that we spend as well. It's true of our time, it's true of our energy, it's true of our focus. What you spend your time on, your energy on, your focus on, shows what you truly treasure, shows where your heart is is. In fact, in our day and time with a, an affluent society, time might be more valuable than money to us. I know that's hard to think about, but, but time might be more valuable to us. I just feel like us as a society, we're just running around like chickens with their heads cut off from this to that. If you ask anyone how they're doing, what are they going to say? I'm busy. We view time as very precious because we have these busy lives. The question is, are we spending that time? Are we spending that energy? Are we spending that time focusing on that which is temporal, things that are temporary? Or are we spending it on pursuing our God and pursuing his will for our lives? Later on in Matthew chapter 6, In the context of worry, Jesus says this in verse 33, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added upon you or added unto you. Now these things in this context are the physical needs that we have. We're talking about food and clothing, the very basics. He says if you focus and and put your your mind on and search after God, then God's going to take care of your physical needs. He's going to take care of your food. He's going to take care of your clothing. If you seek him first, he'll take care of you. But we have to, in order to have this promise, we have to put our mind on the Lord. We have to seek after him. We have to spend our life searching after God. So how are you spending your life? Have you ever thought about it before that When you spend time, you're really spending your life. When we talk about managing time, we're really talking about managing our life. How are you spending your life? How are you spending your time? Now, it's easy with a bank statement to look down the list and see what you bought and see where your heart is. But I want to challenge you this next week to look at how you spend your time. I know that's harder to track, but they have an app for everything, so I'm sure there's some type of app that we can use. And even if you look at a lot of your phones, the smartphones, you can be able to to track 
how often you look at your screen, how often you look at your cell phone screen. I'm not proud to say that most days, mine's about two hours and 20 minutes or so of screen time. Now, some of that I can say, well, that's work, that's, that's text messaging people for this or that, or, or I'm using it as a GPS, but if I'm honest with myself, a lot of times it's watching YouTube videos or doing something else that's less productive. Think about how you spend your time and, and, and consider what that says about your heart. If you're spending all of your time on social media, on TV, if you spend all your time working for more and more money, it might reveal that your heart is set on things that are temporary. But take that, that, that how much you actually spend on those things, those things that are more temporal in mindset, and compare that, ha, compare that to how much you're spending on eternal things. How much time are you spending in studying the Bible? How much time are you spending in prayer? How much time are you spending in serving other people? How much time are you spending in, in trying to encourage the brothers and sisters here at church? How much time are you spending in teaching others spiritual truths? Compare, how are you spending your time? Is it, is it for the temporary? Are you investing in the temp temporary? Or are you investing in the eternal? And see where your heart is. See if you're seeking after God's kingdom and his righteousness, or on the other hand, are we trying to build our own kingdom and trying to build a, a facade of what we believe is the right kind of life. Look at your life. See where your heart is. See how you're spending your time. Now, for sure, we do not earn our eternity by having the most eternal treasure. You don't earn eternal life by having the most good deeds or being the most generous person in the world. You don't inherit the new heavens and the new earth by spending your time on doing the right things. Yet what does happen is when you spend your time and you spend your money and you spend your focus on the eternal things, seeking after God, your heart will be with God. And if your heart is with God, it puts you in the best position to receive His grace and to live that faithful life that God has call, commanded all of His, His children to follow after when they receive salvation. If our heart is right with God, He is what we want most out of this life. And that's the perfect position to receive the grace of God. I like what Grant Osborne says in this quote when he says this, what people treasure becomes the guiding principle for their whole life. What people treasure becomes the guiding principle for their whole life. If you Put all of your treasure in temporary things. That's going to be the guiding principle of your life. If you put all of your treasure in God and his eternal kingdom, that's going to guide your life to a life of faithfulness. What people treasure becomes the guiding principle for their whole life. Let me encourage all of us, not just our graduates, but every one of us to treasure God, treasure eternity with him, I believe that it will lead and guide you in a faithful life before him. So let me encourage all of us, as we think about these graduates looking into the future, as we think about investing our time, our money, our focus, what we search after, let us all look towards the future. And let us all set up, set ourselves up for a bright future. Let us all set ourselves up with a bright future with God. If we treasure God and treasure His righteousness, if we treasure the eternal things, you and I will have the brightest of futures, a future that will last forever. Let's pray together. Dear God, our Father, we're thankful, Lord, for the things that our young people teach us and remind us of. And at this hour, as we're thinking about our graduates, we're, we're thinking about our future. 
or thinking about their future and, and how we can encourage them and, and shape them and mold them to be more like your son and, and how we can influence them and encourage them in the way that they should go. But also we're thinking about how we spend our present so that we can be investing in our future. I pray, Lord, that us as a, a church can surround these young people, these young adults, and to show them what is most important in life, that it's the eternal things, not the temporary things. And I pray, Lord, that you will help us each day to consider what we spend our money on, what we spend our time on, what we spend our focus on, and make sure that all of those things reveal that we have a heart for you. We pray, Lord, that we will have that heart for you every single day, that we will invest in eternal treasures and not just the temporary. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Maybe there's someone here this evening that needs to respond to the invitation. And you want to start this eternal life with God. You can this evening by becoming a Christian, being baptized into Christ. And you start that walk with God, seeking after Him day by day, giving Him your heart, and allowing Him to be the guiding principle of your life day by day. If you need to respond to the gospel and be baptized into Christ, we hope you will do that this evening. Or maybe you just need help and wisdom from other people and encouragement from the brothers and sisters here. We'd encourage you to come as well. If you have any need, please come forward as we stand and sing our invitation song. Jesus, my only hope is you. From early in the morning till late at night, my only hope is you. My only peace is you, Jesus, my only peace is you. From early in the morning till late at night, my only peace is you. My only joy is you, Jesus, my only joy is you. From early in the morning till late at night, my only joy is you. All that I need is you, Jesus, all that I need is you. From early in the morning till late at night, all that I need is you. Thanks, Adam. Uh, if you're not able to take the Lord's Supper this morning and wish to do so, if you pass the door to my left, Brother Ray will assist you. Uh, Elijah, we'll sing Heart of a Servant. We'll sing it through twice. And then uh, I believe Dennis will dismiss us for the week. Have a great week. Enjoy yourselves and enjoy our time downstairs together. <clears throat> Give me the heart of a servant, tender and faithful and true. Fill me with love, then use me, O Lord, so that the world can see you. Give me the heart of a servant, tender and faithful and true. Fill me with love, then use me, O Lord, so that the world can see. Our Father in heaven, thank you so much for today. I thank you for our time of worship and concentration uh, on spiritual things and priorities, love for you and love for others. I'm so thankful for this morning's uh, lesson of encouragement about how we uh, live our lives in front of other people and as we go out into uh, the world tomorrow. Help us to watch what we say and do um, to not be an offense, to watch the things that we put on social media, watch the way we speak, 
Watch the way we act in front of others so that they will think that being a Christian is a good thing and not something silly. For this evening's uh, lesson, I'm so thankful for these uh, four high school uh, seniors and uh, 18, 17, 18 years uh, of growth and we love them all so much and we're so thankful for their parents and, and the influence they had on them and um, life gets a bit cranky uh, occasionally and we pray for their strength and to know that uh, every uh, person in this entire church thinks of them uh, indirectly as our own children. Help us, Father, to uh, love you, to be a good example, and uh, to always be enthusiastic and joyful uh, in your service and service uh, to our fellow man. We love you in Jesus' name. Amen.